Hi, you guys. I'm Scott. This is the What a Weird Week podcast for Friday, May 12th, 2023. Meteorites and bears. Hi, everybody. It's weird. This is like crazy being here. Like really weird, weird tale. Well, I got a great show for you today with some wonderful weird stuff. Thanks for coming back to the What a Weird Week podcast. Or if it's your first time, what we do here is every Friday we drop a weird news of the week top 10. We do an audio podcast, full show notes blog, and YouTube video. Although we're a couple episodes behind, I got to admit, on the YouTubes. If you look in your podcatcher, you will see a link to everything. Or just remember, shownotes.page. Shownotes.page. 10. Okay, here we go. Season 4, episode 33. Our lead story. Lead? Our number 10 story is how excited are you about printed fish? A company in Israel has 3D printed fish. It's not meal ready. It's ready to cook fish. It's like a fish fillet. Well, actually, they start with a lab-grown grouper fish base. And it becomes some kind of edible filament for a 3D food printer. As you can tell by that description, I'm very sciencey, And I didn't oversimplify anything. This lab-grown printable fish could save the environment, save real fish, save all of us. They hope it'll be available for purchase next year. It looks like white goo, but if it tastes good and they can get the cost down, maybe it'll save us from ourselves. I don't know. They didn't talk to any fishers, though. I don't know. That's a whole other side of it. I mean, if you want to do a deep dive and if you want to see what the the goo fish looks like, the printable goo fish, uh, show notes. There is a link. Nine. Number nine, street pianos and why they are a terrible idea. This story from Japan, but similar stories have popped up all over. Even one in a little town near me here on the east coast of Canada. As an art installment, they put a piano somewhere where passersby can stop and play a tune. In this case, it was at a train station in Japan. There was supposed to be a 10-minute time limit. That didn't take Another rule was don't play or sing too loudly, but that also didn't take. Tell you right now, you don't get that kind of stuff with um, paintings of flowers. I don't know art. I've gone on record as saying that before, but you do not get people, generally speaking, you don't get uh, noise violations surrounding flowers or statues of triangles. You just don't get the same thing. So that's why I have concluded street pianos are a terrible idea. Eight. Number eight, fruit roll-up smugglers caught in Israel. Blame TikTok. Two couples from the USA are mentioned in the article as being roll-up smugglers. One couple in the article caught with suitcases full of roll-ups at the airport in Israel, over 660 pounds. 660 pounds of fruit roll-ups. So that's like somebody crunched the numbers because roll-ups don't weigh that much. That's like 20,000, more than 20,000 roll-ups. It's too many roll-ups, you guys. It really is. Like that's that uh, the reason they got stopped. That's a commercial amount of roll-ups. And why this is happening, they blame TikTok because there's this trend, I'm hardly ever on TikTok, you guys, but there's this trend where you take a fruit roll-up and you make some sort of, you put ice cream in it, you make some sort of ice cream wrap or fruit roll-up burrito, that trend took off on TikTok and it became hard to find fruit roll-ups in Israel, but roll-ups still fairly cheap and easy to find in the States. So people thought they could bring a bunch of roll-ups to Israel and sell them at a profit. That's kind of it. The the too long didn't read. There was a run on roll-ups. A roll-up run, you guys. Seven. Our seventh weirdest story of the week. Smart drive through speakers being tested. It's been maybe a week. Since we talked about AI and how the robots are going to take over. But I think the narrative that we should all be scared, terrified of the robots. I think that narrative is going to change if they figure this one out. We're going to start to love the AI and the robots. AI taking your order at the drive-thru. So I picture like just sort of a Alexa on steroids the Google smart speaker on steroids. That's how I'm picturing this. You pull up, you place your order to the smart speaker. I mean, God bless you, hardworking drive through specialists. I don't want anyone to lose their job to a robot, but if it fills a job that nobody likes to do, let's bring in those robots, right? 
And if it gets your order right, we've all had at least one incident where wrong order, whatever, something got mixed up at the drive-thru. I mean, if this robot can get it done, we're going to start to love robots, you guys. Maybe that's what they've been planning all along. This is how they get us to love them. And then they take over. Nice try, robot. Although, thanks thanks for getting my order right. Six. I should say, by the way, Google's big tech conference happened a couple days ago, and they're making their AI more accessible to all of us. Their announcement did not involve Junior Bacon Cheeseburgers, so we went with the, the one that involves Junior Bacon Cheeseburgers. We link to the Google I.O. stuff, too, in the show notes. Six. Number six, woman rescued after five days lost in Australia. And here is how she survived. Put this in your emergency kit. Wine and lollipops. That's really it. That's the whole story. I mean, this lady, it's a classic scenario like you would see in a movie. Lady on vacation in Australia trying to get to Dartmouth Dam, which looks beautiful, by the way. Kind of a landmark that people like to travel to. So lady took a wrong turn, car gets stuck, there's no cell phone reception. If you were watching this movie, at this point you'd be like, ah, come on, seen it before, classic trope. This was supposed to be a day trip, so after the lady didn't check in with her family, it's always good to have a, a plan, you guys, and uh, do somebody to check in with. So the family back home launched a search or put out the alert, you know, after five days missing, she was spotted by a search plane and then rescued. Shout out to the rescue team. She survived on the suckers that she brought for this day trip and a bottle of wine that was going to be a gift for her mom. So all in all, it's a wonderful story of survival and wine and has a happy ending. Five. Number five is a show notes exclusive sort of because I really do try not to get too saucy on this podcast, you know, PG-13, whatever. This is a funny story that is going around uh, being shared a lot on social media about that iceberg in Conception Bay, Newfoundland. Uh, it's a funny shape. I'll just say that. It's a, it's a shape. It might make you think of something. And so it's getting a lot of attention in Newfoundland in the town of dildo which is an actual town in newfoundland and that's all i want to say but we did link to the whole thing if you want to check that out in the show notes and that's number five we got away with doing that for number five you guys four our fourth weirdest story of the week should they add bulls to professional rugby games just hear me out here's how it shook down in france a bull ran onto the rugby field during warm-ups the other day it was chaos the players scrambled jumping over the fence, that kind of thing. The bull was there for a pregame parade to advertise local meat. It was all a publicity stunt to have the, the bulls parade. Look at this delicious local meat. Buy local. And then the bull broke free from his handler and then all that excitement. In the video, uh, you can see everyone is hopping over the fence and that sort of thing, escaping injury, but it could have gone. You know, that's... There's a lot of peril there, right? And so when you watch, the old heart just starts a racing. And it's very exciting. And I don't know much about rugby. One of my kids played in high school. I'm not saying introduce it at the high school level, okay? But would live bulls add to the game of professional rugby? Traditional game of rugby, two human teams, but then throw some bulls in there, sort of like when you... If you were of the age where you played pinball and you'd get, maybe you would hit the right target and you'd get more than one ball going at the same time, maybe two or three, kind of that, think of that, except it's rugby and the balls are bulls. I'm just brainstorming at this point, but I mean, if you're willing to invest, I got the ideas. Three. Number three, another person avoids serious meteorite injury. It's happened again. Some of the weird stories that we've had on this podcast where you think, well, that'll never happen again. It happens again. I call it the weirdening. We're in some sort of weird cycle, repeating weird cycle. The story in 2021, the lady in BC avoided grave injury when a meteorite crashed through her roof and landed on her pillow. And no pillow company jumped in with some sort of space pillow, some sort of asteroid cushion, nothing. Wouldn't that have been, like, I, I'm disappointed in the marketing department. Pillow companies, all of you, drop the ball on that. 
Anyway, that was in 2021. This one, this time around, it was a house in New Jersey. No one was hurt, but there's a hole in the roof. They say it's rare for meteorites to hit houses, but I say sure it is until it's not anymore. We've already had two of these stories on this podcast, on this lonely podcast, two meteorite crashing through roof stories. we got to get some titanium roof company on board. By the way, they think this New Jersey meteorite might be a piece of Halley's Comet. That's kind of neat. Bear in West Virginia rings doorbell to try to draw out homeowners to eat them. Some of that, I'm jumping to conclusions. I'm pretty sure that's what's going on, you guys. We've had similar stories before. One time it was a cute dog that rang the doorbell. I don't think the cute dog was going to eat the owner. But bears have figured out that our homes are basically vending machines. Some of these bears are walking up to our doorbell. They press the button because they know humans will open the door, come outside, and then it's a tasty treat for the bear. That's what I think is happening. The video is in the show notes. I'm on to you, bears. One. Number one is a gross one, but here is a quote from the story. Just gross alert. This involves a, a truck full of... All right, here's the quote. Nico Blankenship, Blankenship told Nine, Nine News Tuesday, Tuesday he was in the right lane, lane then some, some kind of dung came, came spewing, spewing from, from the top, top of the truck in front of him. him. He said, he said he's, he's washed, washed his car, car several times, times wiped, wiped the area around, around the tires, the tires at, the at the bottom of the car, of the car with, with baby, baby wipes, wipes, but the, but the smell, smell still lingers. lingers. This happened on a highway in Colorado. Nico is also quoted as being thankful he had his windows up and the sunroof closed. So what happened? Obviously, somebody's ex-spouse was trying to get even with them and it went terribly wrong. I mean, I've seen that 80s comedy. That has to be it, right? The official story is something as simple as a sewage truck spill. But I think we know what's going on. Honorable mention. I didn't want to end on the gross story, so we're going to end on the cute story of the oldest dog in the world. Just had a birthday on May 11th. We're talking about Bobby. We had Bobby. Bobby was in the news uh, back in February, and we had the Bobby dog on the podcast because Bobby in the news for being an old dog with a friend who's a cat. That made the news And that was a nice heartwarming story for our weird podcast. So happy birthday, Bobby the dog. Happy 31st birthday. Wow. Okay, that is that. Thank you for listening, streaming, subscribing, downloading, sharing, telling a friend, telling an enemy. All of the things I am thankful for, I remain thankful for. Hope you can tune in next week.